Hi everyone. Um, my name is Sydney Marina. I am Miss Universe Albania and I'm so happy today to be going live on Sash Factor Official. Uh, this is my second time so I'm very happy to be back and today I'm just going to be answering questions, interacting with you guys. So go ahead, send in any questions you have. I'm going to try to answer as many as I can and I'm really excited. So for anyone that just joined, I will say it again. I am Cindy Marina, Miss Universe Albania. Hi, Adam, and everyone at Sash Factor Official. Thank you so much for having me today. I am so happy to be here, and this is my second time back. So I'm going to be interacting with you guys, answering any questions. Feel free to send any questions my way, and I will try to answer them. Yay, love to the Philippines. I am so excited to be talking to you guys today. I really was wishing that the Miss Universe competition would be in the Philippines this year because I heard some rumors about that, but it wasn't, which is okay. I'm going to try to come another time and visit, but I was looking forward to that. Please raise your volume to higher. Okay, let's see. Hello, Jing. Love to Cambodia. Thank you guys for the compliments. You guys are so sweet. If you guys want to answer, ask me any questions that you want answered, feel free to ask away. How are you feeling that you're about to leave for Georgia soon? When are you leaving for Georgia? I am so excited to be going to Georgia. I've been there before. So I kind of have a feel for how everything is down there and it's really nice. I think it's going to be a beautiful show. I'm very excited. Also a little bit stressed, of course, just getting all the last minute things together. Um, it's like the last stretch, I guess, before we go. But also just a lot of feelings of excitement and I can't wait to meet everyone. And I will be leaving for Georgia on the 28th of November. So that's the day that we have to report there. So I will be flying on the 28th, landing on the 28th, and that's when I'll start my journey. Are you packing up now for Miss Universe 2019? Yes, I have started packing. It is such a process to have everything all together. So we started packing just everyday outfits that I'm going to be wearing. And then I think at the end, I'll be packing my evening gown and my national costume. Davo City, Philippines. How are you? I am so good. How are you guys? Looking forward to see you in top three. Thank you so much. That means so much to me that you guys believe in me. And I hope everyone that is rooting for me, I can make you guys proud. Uh, you guys are sending compliments. Somebody said love from the Philippines, Joel. Thank you, Joel. Sending my love to the Philippines. And Rafa Reyes said, one of the best Albanian reps so far. Thank you. That means a lot to me. I am so proud to represent Albania and just hopefully make not only my country, but everyone that is supporting me like you guys proud of my representation and how I do. So it means a lot that you guys support me. How do you prepare yourself? So this is a good question. I have been doing a lot of training and just getting ready because when I go, I want to feel good and feel well prepared. So I have actually been training with the pageantology girls. If you guys don't know of them, they're two former Miss USA's, Susie Castillo and Shandy Finnessy. So they um, were Miss USA's and now they do pageant training. So I got in contact with them and they happily said that they would train me, which I was so thankful for. So I've been working with them a lot on Q&A and interview and they are so amazing. They um, really make me feel well prepared and they're just so easy to talk to. So training with them has been such a blessing for me and I think that it will really come in handy when I'm at Miss Universe. As far as walking and um, just other stuff like that, I have been training with other people. I've trained with a walking coach. So I've been doing a lot of preparations and I hope it'll show when I go there. Something about my national costume, I can tell you something about that. So the theme of my national costume is a warrior theme. And basically the idea behind my national costume is um, I'm representing the Queen Tawika. She was a queen 
in Albania when her husband died she took over this was in the Lyrian times so she became the queen of Albania and she was so powerful she was known for going head to head with the Roman Empire and I just thought that was such a beautiful representation of women especially Albanian women are so strong and powerful and really driven so I wanted to represent that in my national costume um Somebody said, since it's Miss Universe pageant season, are you going to miss your traditional American Thanksgiving dinner family with your, uh, with your family? Yes, I will be missing Thanksgiving. That is a tradition that they do in America. And I am going to school in California, so I'm currently in America. And yeah, I will be missing Thanksgiving, but it's not a problem because Miss Universe is so exciting. So I think it's a good trade-off. If you, I think somebody said, Gian said, if you will not win, um, or if you're not in the running, what country are you rooting to win? So that's hard because, I mean, I haven't met, I've met a couple of the girls. I've met Miss USA and Miss Bolivia when I was in New York, which was so exciting, but I haven't met too many of the other girls. So it's hard because we just know each other on social media and all the girls just seem so amazing. They have amazing backgrounds, amazing education, and all the causes that they stand for are really admirable. So for me, it's hard to just pick one. Um, I'm sure you guys want me to say the Philippines and I would be happy to just, of course, I want to win. I'm going to do everything in my power and hopefully I'm the one that is chosen as a representative. But if not, um, whoever wins, I know that they'll be worthy of the crown. So I look forward to just spending time and meeting my other sisters. <laughs> Adam said, have you been stalking your fellow competitors in the pageant? Um, I would not call it stalking. I am, you know, mutual friends with them on Instagram. So I see their posts, I see their stories, of course. And, um, I like to comment or like their pictures and just let them know, like, I'm here, I'm your sister, I, like, I think you guys are doing great, so I like to see, obviously, what other girls are doing, because it's fun to see everyone's journey, everyone's journey is so unique, and everyone prepares kind of in a different way, even though we're all preparing for the same thing, so I think it's interesting to see what other girls do and what they're up to, so, yeah, I do keep up with them, and I think it's fun, we also have a WhatsApp group message that we text in, we were just talking in it, like, two days ago, so we all keep in touch. Um, next question is, how do you feel that the pageant is only 10 days this year? It's so short. I know I was kind of sad when I first found out it was only 10 days because I wanted to be there longer and just have like the whole long experience of Miss Universe since it is once in a lifetime. But I know that it is going to be an amazing experience no matter what, no matter how long we're there. So I am just so thankful that I'm going to be there. And I think that no matter how long it is, I'm going to have a wonderful time. So, you know, I was sad in the beginning, but I think looking at the bright side of things is always the best way to go. Um, Mark said, what is your advocacy? My advocacy, so I'm an advocate for ocean health and wellness. And I just advocate basically about taking care of our oceans. And a big part of that is limiting our pollution, not only in the oceans, but also on the beaches. So I've been working with a lot of different organizations to kind of see what the root problem is to help out do my part and also raise my voice to raise awareness for this cause. So while working with these organizations, I've seen that one of the biggest causes of pollution is plastic. So I have kind of become an advocate against plastic as well, you, you could say. And I've worked with the Surfrider organization. I've worked with a lot of organizations in California, but also in Albania. So um, when I was in Albania recently, I was able to meet with the Minister of the Environment. And speaking to him, he was kind of voicing the same concerns that I had about so much plastic pollution happening in the oceans, especially on the beaches of Albania. They have been seeing a lot more pollution accumulating over the years, which is a huge problem because it's affecting so like wildlife, it affects, it's just the circle of life. It's really um, devastating to see the amount of pollution increasing. So while talking to him, he actually let me know that they are working on a plan 
And in Albania, they are um, starting their plan to eliminate all plastic shopping bags by June 2020. So they started this campaign recently. And while I was in Albania, I was invited to go speak at the university in the capital, which is Tirana. So I got to speak to fellow students because I'm a student in the uni at university as well. So being able to speak to other students was so special because you know, you're just relating to people your own age. So while I was there, I spoke about my advocacy and why I think it's so important. And also the amazing campaign that the um, minister started in Albania to remove plastic shopping bags. So we were there speaking to educate the students because students have a big impact on this, especially in the capital. So that is just a little bit about my advocacy. If you wanna learn more, I have a lot of posts on my Instagram. You can go look there and it's at Cindy, C-I-N-D-Y, Marina with two A's at the end. And you can read some of my posts. Um, I write pretty lengthy posts, um, pretty lengthy comments, I would say. So that's just a little taste of that. If you have more questions, leave them and I'll try to answer further if you're more interested. So how does it feel, sorry, I'm having trouble speaking feel meeting Katriona for the first time in New York last month. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. I was really looking forward to meeting her. Um, I think she is so amazing. She's an incredible Miss Universe. She is so passionate about what she does and she's just a great example to all of us coming after her. So I was so excited to meet her. She was so, so kind. And I know that I, I expected her of course to be kind because she is, you know, selected to be Miss Universe and they're going to select an incredible girl. So I was, you know, looking forward to meeting her. But when I met her, I was even more amazed at how kind and humble and just so personable she was. So being able to spend time with her, we actually attended an event together. It was the Action for Mothers and Children in Kosovo event in New York. And in that event, basically, I'll just give a quick summary of the event. It was to raise awareness and to raise funds for mothers and children in Kosovo who don't have a lot of funds and who don't have a lot of medical equipment. And this often causes premature births that result in premature deaths. So that was basically the cause of the event. And we attended that, she attended it, I attended it, I met her there and she was amazing. I spent the whole night with her and talked to her. She gave me advice, which was so kind of her. So I, was so happy to meet her and she's just really incredible. Oh, I saw a sweet comment. I won't read it, but okay. So here we go. Oh, somebody said, come to the Philippines. We'll serve you a lot of buko recipes. I am dying to come to the Philippines. I had so many Filipino friends actually growing up. There was a huge Filipino community around where I lived. So I, kind of got a taste of the culture just a bit. I mean, obviously going to the Philippines is a completely different experience, I'm sure. So I'm dying to come and experience it for myself. I really hope I can come soon. And I just, I already know you guys will be so hospitable. I can tell how kind everyone is. So I hopefully will be coming very soon. I'm gonna try to like go to the bottom because I know a lot of people are commenting and then like work my way up a little bit too because I don't wanna people to think I'm ignoring them. So I'm seeing a lot of comments, okay. Okay, somebody said thoughts on why Miss Universe candidates are very hype pre-pageant but during the actual pageant they fade. Um, I don't really know. I think of course people have their pre-picks or um, their selections, I forget what they're called, predictions, that's the word. So people always make predictions. I think it's a fun part of the pageant to predict, you know, who you think will make it here, what your favorites are. So I think, um, I mean, I don't know if this is exactly your question, but as a candidate, sometimes it can be overwhelming to see a lot of those and like maybe you aren't placed where you want to place or whatever in the predictions. So for me, a big thing has just been staying grounded and being like, okay, you know, just you believe in yourself, you know, you can do it and like trying not to let the outside noise come in. And I'm sure a lot of other girls can attest to that too. Someone said, who is your favorite Miss Universe? 
That is such a tough question. I get this question a lot. Um, of course, everyone wants to know because everyone has a favorite. So for me, it's hard because I think, I mean, I love so many of the past Miss Universes. I've been watching so many interviews and just getting to know previous title holders even more during this time that I've been training. Um, if I had to choose one that's really hard, I will choose two. I really like Olivia Culpo, um, former Miss USA, Miss Universe 2012. I think she is so well-spoken and she was so young when she won. So we kind of have like a very similar journey. When she entered her pageants, it was her first one. My first pageant ever was Miss Universe Albania. So I kind of um, identify with her on that. And I just think that she really was a great Miss Universe and now she has a beautiful career. So I really admire her for not only her reign, but also her career afterwards. Another favorite Miss Universe is Pia. I love Pia. I think she is just so kind and every interview or video I've seen of her, she just seems very genuine. And that's something that I really appreciate in people is just being a genuine person. So I know she had this huge kind of scandal when she won with the crown situation. And I just think she handled it so well, like a true queen and she's just amazing. So I think I would have to pick those two. It's really hard to pick just one, but also Catriona, I can't forget her too. I mean, I met her in person. She was amazing. Guys, it's a hard question. I can't pick just one. Okay. Besides preparing for the pageant, what do you do for fun? So that's a good question. I, I mean, I don't know. I love, I'm the kind of person that I can be very high energy and like want to go out and explore and do fun things. And I love doing that. I love going to museums is a really fun thing for me. I love art. So I love seeing different art and I could just spend the whole day at a museum. Another thing, I play volleyball. So I am an athlete at the University of Southern California. I have been playing high level volleyball for 11 years and I also play for the Albania national team. So I wouldn't say that's like something I do besides preparing for the pageant, but that's a big part of my life and something that I've done for so long. So I really do have fun playing volleyball. So I guess that's another thing. Um, somebody said, hope you'll become best friends with Gazzini. Oh, she's so sweet. I hope, um, I hope I do too. I think she seems so sweet. We actually had like an interaction over Instagram recently and she just seems so kind. So very excited to meet her. Um, someone said, are you looking forward to meeting Lou Sierra? Yeah, I am. I think she's so um, awesome. I, you know, have seen her in the previous Miss Universe competitions, training the girls, and she seems, you know, very strong, very strong-willed, but I think that's amazing, and um, coming from a sports background, I'm used to having people give me feedback and kind of coaching me, so I don't think, you know, that will be too difficult to handle someone telling you what to do or you know, how to do it, because that is her job. So I'm excited to meet her. I think she's strong. She's had a great career in modeling, and she knows what she's doing. So I think that'll be fun. Someone said, how do you handle criticisms? So, you know, this is hard, especially when you do gain more, um, what's the word? I don't know. <laughs> you guys, so when you gain more, I don't know, I guess people watching you and you just gain more popularity, people tend to criticize more. And that is just kind of a normal thing, I guess, because more people are paying attention. So I was aware of that. And it is hard at times to have people criticize you, especially when they've never met you. And you're like, well, you don't even know me, like, how can you criticize me? But at the end of the day, you never know what someone's going through behind a phone screen, writing a comment. And it's just for me, I don't, I try not to take anything personally because, like I said, you don't know what people are going through. And if you don't know me personally, to me, it's like, how can you criticize me? You don't know who I am as a person. All you see is what you see on Instagram, which only goes so deep. So I try to just tune it out. I have a great support system with my family. If I'm ever feeling down, I will call my mom or um, my aunts and it's just, I think having someone there for you too is really helpful. So I think a good way is just to know that you don't define your worth based off of social media or what someone is saying about you, but that's what I do. So 
How are you preparing for the dreaded closed door interview in the pageant? That is funny. Um, how am I preparing? So I kind of mentioned this before, but I'm preparing with um, training and I've been training with the pageantology girls, which are two former Miss USA's, Sh Susie Castillo and Shandy Finnessy. And they have prepared me a lot. I've worked with them quite a bit for the interview portion and also the question and answer. And they have just given me a lot of tips and we do like a lot of like uh, mock interviews. So I'll like walk in and they ask me questions that might be asked while you're getting interviewed. So I think the best way to prepare is really just um, knowing yourself. There's no, you're not going to know what they're going to ask you. So for me, it's like, I just need to know myself and like what I stand for, what I want to tell the judges. And at the end of the day, no matter what question that is, I feel like that's is what is going to be portrayed. Um, okay, so Adam said, you look stunning in your Fadil photos. How does it feel being photographed by a fellow Albanian? It is such a huge honor for me. Fadil is an incredible, incredible human being, like seriously one of the most giving, open-hearted people I've ever met. And him being Albanian is just so amazing because um, obviously growing up as an Albanian girl, I've heard so much about him. And he has given so much back to Albania and is kind of an ambassador for Albania in a way. Everybody knows him. Everybody loves him. So when I had the opportunity to meet him this year, I was so honored because, you know, when you hear about for someone for so long and you get the opportunity to meet them, it's really exciting. So when I met him immediately, I was just like, I don't know. I just thought he was such an amazing person. And working with him, he's so professional but he's also so creative. So some of the pictures that he has gotten of me are seriously amazing. Like some of my favorite pictures ever. And my parents love them. My mom wants to like print one of them out because she thinks it's so amazing. And he is truly so talented. So um, I feel really lucky that I've gotten to work with him. And him being a fellow Albanian, it just feels like, I don't know, it feels like we have kind of that connection of being Albanian and we understand each other. We get to speak Albanian with each other while we're shooting, which is fun. Um, someone said, do you have natural blonde hair? I do have natural blonde hair. Whenever um, I was young, I had like really blonde and like kind of streaky different colored hair, like different shades of blonde. This is like a random story, but um, people would like go up to my mom when I was like five or six and they're like, did you dye your daughter's hair? She's like, absolutely not. Like I would not do that. So that's a funny story. But yes, I am naturally blonde. I do get highlights, but natural blonde. Um, okay. So. <clears throat> okay, wait, I'm going to try. I think I missed some questions. Okay, Adam said, social media has changed the way we communicate with each other due to, te due to technology. But at the same time, it has been used to bully and shame people. Do you think social media is ultimately positive or negative? Great question. So I think just like anything, there is positive and negatives to social media. But at the end of the day, it's how you choose to use it. And of course, you can't control if someone's coming on your page and bullying and, you know, shaming. And I think that is so wrong. But I think social media is a great tool because like right now, I'm able to talk to people from the Philippines who are currently in the Philippines. And I'm in California on the other side of the world. So that's amazing. You can have the ability to connect with people all over the world. And it's really a great advancement in technology. On the other side, I absolutely do not condone bullying or shaming other people. I think it's absolutely unacceptable. So I know with the prevalence of social media, a lot more um, cyberbullying has occurred. I think, you know, the biggest thing that we can do is just spread love to one another and try to be understanding. I know it's hard if someone is writing nasty comments, but like I said, for me, if someone's criticizing me, I try to think, well, you know, I can't just go back at this person because I don't know why they're saying this or what is causing them to say this. So the best way to react is with love. And um, ultimately, I think it has its positives and negatives, but I do think it's a great tool.
somebody said, do you like the continental picks? Um, I don't know. I think that it's good. I think it gives more girls a chance um, from different countries. So I know people say like some people have a strong sash factor and my country, Albania, maybe has not been known for having a strong sash factor. But I think having the continental picks gives more girls a chance. On the other hand, I know that some people argue that, well, maybe some girls didn't get the fair, you know, spot or I don't know. There's a lot of arguments for me. I think it's good because you can see um, diversity around the world, around the universe, and you get to see girls from every continent. And then I think it's great that they did do the five wild card picks because that gives them the chance to choose five other very strong pretenders from any continent. So I think it's a good system. Um, whatever your opinions are, maybe let me know. I'd love to hear more opinions. Somebody said, why so much beauty in Albania? Aw, uh, that's me. So actually, Albanian women are so beautiful and not just that, but so strong. Seriously, Albanian women, every Albanian woman I've ever met in my life has left me just like taken aback with their strength and their determination. Like I, my mom, for example, she's a huge um, role model for me. She has really just gone on such a journey in her life, of course, with my dad, but I can really see the strength in her and the strength just like radiates from her. So that's something I admire so much. And I know that, that wasn't a question, but that's just a side note on Albanian women. I really do admire them. So I'm excited to kind of portray that in my national costume as well. Megs said, um, I love your positivity and I'm supporting you and thank you so much. I just wanted to give you a shout out because I'm reading all your guys' nice comments. It's hard to reply to everyone, but I'm going to try to reply to as many as I can. So thank you. Um, what country do you think is your tough competitor? There are so many strong girls. I mean, every year there is, especially this year. I've seen so many girls who are just amazing in so many different ways so I think everyone's a competitor of course um I think I don't know I don't want to say specific girls because I don't want you know other people to feel like well why didn't you think me I really do think every single girl who is going to Miss Universe deserves to be there and is a strong competitor so I don't want to count anyone out I think everyone's amazing and everyone has to come with their a-game of course what do you think is the biggest issue women are facing in the workplace? Um, a huge issue women are facing in the workplace. There's a lot, actually. But for one is the wage gap that is happening and still continues to occur all over the world in several different countries, in Albania, in the U.S., everywhere. Um, I think it's a huge problem because women are doing the same job that men are doing and they are getting paid significantly less. For example, in Albania, there is a 10% difference in the wage gap between men and women. So I just think it's not right. I think that women deserve to be paid equally, equal work for equal pay. And I think that's a really big issue that women are facing, and we need to address this. I know a lot of people have addressed this issue, but it's still not resolved. So personally, I will continue to raise my voice, and I urge not just w women, but also men to raise their voice on this issue because it does need to get resolved. And the more people talking about it, the more conversation happening around it, the more I think likely we are to make a bigger impact and hopefully make the change that we want. Someone said, what is your view of Miss Thailand? I think she is so beautiful. Um, she is gorgeous, truly. I have never met her. Um, I will meet her very soon, of course, but I've seen her on Instagram. I think she is a great candidate, a great competitor, and just a beautiful girl. So I'm very excited to meet her. I've seen a little bit of her videos and pictures, and she seems like very sweet. So I'm very excited to meet her, as well as the other girls, of course. Some uh, Adam said, are you excited about the new uh, Moad crown going to be unveiled soon? 
I am so excited. I cannot wait for them to unveil the crown. I've been dying to see it. I think it's so exciting. Of course, I love the Mickey Moto crown. I think it is so, so beautiful, but I'm very excited that they are getting a new crown because um, the other crowns, you know, they have been around. So to have something fun and new um, as the Miss Universe crown, I think is going to be very special. And I've seen the brand Moad. I've seen what they've done and they have done an amazing job on other projects that they've done. So I do believe that they will come out with something amazing, truly deserving of a Miss Universe. Someone said, can you set a volleyball from back row into a quick hit? So I'm guessing you're a volleyball fan if you know that or a volleyball player. Um, can you set a volleyball from back row? Well, it is hard. It's not recommended. I think if I did it, my coach might yell at me, but you definitely can do it. Never say never. Someone said, do you believe in karma? Um, that's hard. I would say yes and no. I would say I believe that everything happens for a reason. So I don't know the answer to that exactly, but I do believe everything happens for a reason. And that if you're a good person, you will be rewarded. I've kind of learned that from my mom in a way. She never specifically said karma. She never said the word karma, but she always goes out of her way to do very generous acts and just to be a good person, even to people that she's never met, that she just meets in passing. And I'm always like, wow, mom, did you know that person? Like, she's like, no, I just met them. I'm like, wow. Like, so I'm always so taken aback by her generosity and her kindness and she always said that her dad actually told her that whatever you do will come back 10 times better or more to yourself. So if you're kind to someone, kindness will return to you 10 times, like tenfold. And I think that's just like a beautiful way to look at things. And that's kind of how I look at things. So that's how I try to lead my life is just lead it in a way where I would be proud of myself looking back at myself and also to lead it in a way in that sense that if I'm kind to someone, kindness will come back to me. Um, Adam said, is training for Miss Universe same like training for volleyball championship games, which is more intense? So that's interesting because when I entered Miss Universe Albania, I had never entered or done any pageants before, so I didn't really have any background in that. And I did see that my volleyball training, in a way, really helped me and came in handy just um, in the lessons that I've learned as a volleyball player and as an athlete. So I wouldn't say training is the same because if, like, you really look at it and break it down, volleyball training is very specific. You do footwork, different drills, and training for Miss Universe. You're training public speaking, walking. So technically, it is different, but... I think at the root of it, as a competition or as a competitor myself, I think a lot of the things that I've learned as a volleyball player and as an athlete will help me in Miss Universe or as a Miss Universe. So I think if I had to choose one that's more intense, I can't choose. Uh, they're both so different. Volleyball is very intense physically, I would say, because it is physical sport. Of course, Miss Universe training has a physical aspect. I do work out about five days a week. Um, but I would say they're different. It's too hard to pick one. Michael said, hi, can you please greet my mom? It's her birthday today. Her name, oh my gosh, I hope I don't mess up her name. Jonalyn Can Candelaria. Hi, happy birthday. I hope you have an amazing day. And I really hope I said your name right. I'm sorry if I messed up, but you have a very kind son that is obviously giving you a birthday shout out. So happy birthday. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Aside from your family and friends, who is your biggest fan? Wow, that's hard because my family are super fans. I love them for it. They're so supportive. Um... Aside from my family and friends, okay, probably my dog. No, I'm just kidding. But I don't know. I think now that I'm getting more of a following on Instagram, I'm seeing so many comments. People send me so many supportive messages. So I would just say my fans and the people that are supporting me are 
I guess, some of my biggest fans and supporters. And that really gives me, um, I don't know, excitement, like breathes life into my journey, which is really exciting. Um, what's your fave pa pageantry and fan page you love a lot? I love Sash Factor. Thank you guys for having me. Um, I don't know. I try not to follow too many because I think, like I said, when you're preparing, if you see so many um, things or see so many opinions, sometimes it can get to your head and can mess with your training. But I do follow Sash Factor. I love watching all of their posts and seeing what they post. I also love Miss You updates on Instagram. I think she posts a lot of, she posts, I think tries to post all of the girls, which is amazing. Um, and I actually get to take over on her page one day. So that was a lot of fun. So those are two of my favorite fan pages, or not fan pages, but I think pageant pages is what you can call them. How do you define confidently beautiful? What a great question. I think confidently beautiful can mean so many different things to so many different people. For me, it's just knowing who you are and really taking the journey. I mean, this is kind of going to be the long answer, but taking the journey for yourself to get to know yourself because I truly think you can really be a confident person and feel confidently beautiful when you just accept yourself for who you are. Um, recently, this is a side note, yesterday, I don't know if you guys know, but the makeup artist, Makeup by Mario, he posted this beautiful message on Instagram and he finally came out and I think he just was talking about his struggles his whole life and gave this beautiful speech about how he's finally come to love himself and feel confident in his skin. And that's just an example of how you can feel confidently beautiful. But he, of course, went on this really hard journey of finding himself and accepting himself and finding the strength to in, to tell people so they can accept him as well. And I know maybe this doesn't, you think it doesn't relate, but it does because like I'm saying, he took the journey to discover himself and to accept himself. And that's when you can truly feel confidently beautiful. And um, I, that is kind of a long answer, but I think that's what I would say is kind of a way that I define it. Um, someone said, do you think having plastic surgery is an advantage or disadvantage? I don't know. I wouldn't really say either. I think to each their own, everyone should do what makes them feel the happiest and, um, makes them feel, I guess, the best version of themselves. I'm not saying that you should go out and get plastic surgery, but I also kind of understand why some people might do that because if it helps them feel better about themselves that's something that people do. So I don't think it's an advantage or a disadvantage because at the end of the day, um, of course, being beautiful or being whatever people think is a good beauty standard is something that people look at. But at the end of the day, being Miss Universe is not about being beautiful. It's about being a good person, someone willing to give back and someone that has a passion and a drive to inspire others. So I just don't think that at the end of the day, beauty is what it's all about. And for me, that's not why I entered at all. I entered for reasons, nothing related to beauty. I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to be, you know, find my confidently beautiful definition. And um, I think that's why people should enter pageants. I don't think you should enter with that idea of, oh, I'm going to be the most beautiful. I think you need to be deeper as a person. Um, the next question is, many pageant enthusiasts say they should avoid social media during the competition, in your opinion. Um, I think everyone should do what makes them feel the most comfortable. So if you think that being on social media um, during the pageant is going to mess with you during the competition, then don't go on social media. And that just comes with knowing yourself. I think for me, it's a great way to connect with people outside who want to see what we're doing, our preparations, the events we're going to. And that's something that I look forward to doing while I'm there is posting about my experience. Just so people know, and I think it's a great way for me to document my experience at Miss Universe. But I would just say, do whatever makes you feel the best and everyone should, you know, kind of know themselves and do that. What is the most important quality a Miss Universe should have? Well, I think there's 
I mean, there's a few, but I think the biggest one is just having um, a giving and open heart. If you're Miss Universe, you're representing so many people. You're a global ambassador. You're not just representing a country anymore. So to be a Miss Universe, you need to have an open heart and to kind of lead with an open heart and to be able to understand other people and to be, I don't want to say personable, but be approachable. And I think, you know, one of the best ways to do that is to be a caring, open-hearted person. What is beauty without efficacy? Well, beauty. <laughs> I think, you know, being beautiful, like I said, goes so far. But at the end of the day, if you're doing something with that on a bigger scale, if you're making an impact, I think that is way more meaningful than just being a beautiful girl on social media or whatever. So I think, you know, having something that you are passionate about, whatever that may be, really gives you purpose, not just as a title holder, but as a person. And I'm going to accept, I think, two more questions and then I'm going to sign off. So if you guys have any burning questions, comment them now. And I'm going to go ahead and answer two more. Well, <laughs> I'll wait. Or maybe I missed some. Let me look up. Let me scroll. <clears throat> Okay, here's one I don't think I got. What makes you an ex or what makes you extraordinary as a woman? Well, first of all, I think all women are extraordinary to begin with. For me, I think what makes me extraordinary is just that or not just me, but everyone is that we're all unique individuals in our own way and we're able to express ourselves in different ways and kind of show our passions and what we care about. But to be an extraordinary woman, everyone has their own definition, but for me, it's just being an authentic person and having that authenticity in every aspect of your life. So I, you know, try to lead my life like this and I do, you know, recommend that to others because when you're authentic, you truly know yourself and um, I think that's when you feel the best. Okay, I'm seeing a couple questions. Oh, Meg said, not a question, but I'm very proud of how you have carried yourself as Miss Universe Albania. Thank you so much. That means so much to me to have that feedback from people that they think I'm doing a good job because I really do want to do the best job I can during my reign and have a, you know, purposeful reign. I don't want to just have the title for a year. Okay, last question. Um, yes, can you give a message to all your Filipino fans cheering for you in Miss Universe? I want to say thank you so much for supporting me. I see all your guys' messages, all your comments on my pictures, and nothing makes me happier than seeing, sending love or from the Philippines. I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys are so kind, such a big heart, and I really do look forward to coming to the Philippines soon. But my message is thank you so much for supporting me. I really do hope you continue to support me, and it really means so much to me to have people from places all around the world like the Philippines supporting me because I don't know that just shows me that I'm doing something right hopefully so I love you guys so much thank you for your support and thank you Sash Factor for having me today I had an amazing time interacting with you guys I hope you guys will follow my journey to Miss Universe I'm leaving very soon and I hope to hear more from you guys if you guys want to follow me on my Instagram. It's at Cindy Marina with two A's at the end. And you can look at my website. Actually, I just launched it. It's cindymarina.com. You can subscribe to my newsletter and you can get um, updates on what I'm doing and kind of get a better way to know me. So I would say check out those two places and let me know what you think, if you have any questions. And I love you guys. Thank you for your support. And I'm signing off.